Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching the Cloud Director Setup. In this lesson, we'll start off by providing you a vCloud Director administration overview. We'll go into the web interface that a vCloud Director admin would spend their time in. I'll go through and give you a tour of the different tabs and different options. Uh, basically, a good administration overview of things that you might typically see when administering vCloud Director. From there, we'll move on and we'll perform the first step in setting up a vCloud Director from the web interface, which is to connect it to a vCenter server and a vShield manager virtual appliance. After that, we'll create our first provider virtual data center, and then we'll create a virtual machine deployment template. So with that, let's get started. When it comes to administering VMware vCloud Director, it's primarily done at the web interface. The web interface is rich, and it really has everything that you'll need to administer vCloud Director. Whether or not you're an administrator or an end user, you'll spend most of your time with vCloud Director's web interface. So to access the web interface, really you can just type in the IP address or the domain name of your vCloud Director virtual machine or a physical server if you chose that route. So most likely that's going to redirect you to https colon slash slash the name of the server slash cloud. And then from there you'll log in as administrator if you're an admin or using an end user's account if you've set those up. So from there, you'll see the graphic that you see on the right, where you can navigate to the home screen, to managing and monitoring if you're an administrator, or to my cloud if you're an end user. From there, you can administer the VMware vCloud virtual infrastructure, roll out new virtual machines, create new organization, virtual data centers, create new vApps, access virtual machine consoles, whatever you need to do. So with that, let's go over to our web interface, and let me give you a nice tour of what it's like to administer VMware vCloud Director. All right, so here I am in my web browser and to access vCloud Director's web console, I'm just going to type 10.0.1.183, the lower of the two IP addresses that I configured on the vCloud Director virtual appliance. Notice how this redirects me up here to HTTPS colon slash slash the same IP address slash cloud. I'm going to say OK here because I had logged in previously. Something else I also want to point out is that I've already created a static DNS entry or alias for this IP address. So if I were to go up here and replace this IP address with vcd-cell1, the DNS entry I created, again, we're brought to the same web interface and we're accessing it now using a DNS name. So I'm going to log in as administrator, the administrator account that we already created. And this brings us up really to the administration homepage. So up here on the left, top left, you've got system, you've got the home tab, manage and monitor and administration. End users don't have manage and monitor or administration. They'll just have home and then they'll have access to their cloud that you as an administrator are going to create for them. We also have the quick start down here, which is what we'll be using to get vCloud Director up and configured with a connection to vCenter, vShield, create a provider virtual data center, and other network and organizational stuff. So notice on the right-hand side here, we've got Getting Started, which is a nice Getting Started guide. I highly recommend it. You've got Help Information, VMware Support, Feature Request, and About. And this same support menu can be accessed anytime up here underneath the Help menu. If I click on that, again, you see the same support menu there. We've also got preferences up here for the administration account or whatever account you're logged into. You can tell it where you want it to place you when you log in, which page. You can configure alerts related to uh, leases, and then you can change your password here. So I'll say cancel. And then if we go into manage and monitor, as an administrator, this is really where you would spend most of your time, creating new organizations, new provider virtual data centers, managing networks, creating connections to vCenters, resource pools, hosts, data stores, switches, and port groups. You can also access log files in here and administer blocking tasks. If we go into the administration tab, here's where you would administer users, roles, system settings like email, LDAP, password policies, branding for your clouds that you're going to create, public IP addresses, and blocking tasks. Up here underneath each of these menus, 
notice the little gear. If you do the gear, this will tell you the actions that you can perform within this submenu. So you could create a new user or a new notification. There's the plus icon over here, which is also new, create a new user. Down here on the bottom left, you've got running and fail task. You can click on that to find out the status of your task, very similar to what you would find in the vSphere client. So if you're used to using the vSphere client, I could tell you this is a very rich and useful web interface, and it works very similarly to the vSphere client, and even more similarly to the new vSphere web client. So in our case, we're going to be spending a much of our time initially going through the quick start menu here. This is really the best way to get started going through the eight different tasks that it has you perform here in the quick start menu. Once we've performed these tasks, we'll have access to this task menu down here, which is where you can immediately jump from the home screen into managing provider virtual data centers, networks, network pools, organizations, organization VDCs, uh, users, and so forth. One last thing I want to point out are these arrows up here on the left-hand side, top left. These function really the same as your web browser's back and forward buttons do. So I can click back, and I can go back a few screens or a few pages, or I can go forward. So really, I think they're just redundant navigation buttons if you, for example, went full screen with your web browser, just like this. Now you've got back and forward buttons that you can use to navigate without having to access your web browser's menus. Now let's talk about connecting VMware vCloud Director to VMware vCenter and vShield. This is really the first thing you need to do once you go through that initial setup wizard, and that's why it's the first task they have you perform under the Quick Start menu. Honestly, you're not going to be able to do anything with vCloud Director until you connect it to vCenter and vShield. So there's really two ways to do it. Like I said, one is to use the Quick Start menu under Home, or you can use the Attach a New vCenter wizard under Manage and Monitor. And typically what admins do is they first use the Quick Start menu to attach a new vCenter for their very first vCenter, and then later when they have other vCenters they want to add, they would do it underneath Manage and Monitor. Also, make sure that you have a vShield license key entered over in vCenter, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Now let's go over to the vCloud Director web interface and connect to vCenter and vShield. So here in the vCloud Director interface, I've logged in as administrator, and that brought me to the Home tab, and the very first task underneath Quick Start is to attach a vCenter. So I'll click on that link there, and that brings up this window, which is going to guide us through connecting to vCenter. And first, I need to enter my vCenter hostname or IP address. I'll just type in vCenter here, take the default port number, type in my administrator username and password. And now we need to give vCenter a name. And this isn't the host name of the vCenter server. This is just whatever name we want to make up, which will be shown inside vCloud Director. So I'm just going to type in vCenter. And because I could have this vCloud Director managing multiple vSphere lab infrastructures or multiple vSphere infrastructures, I'm going to call this lab one. Then I can put a description down here. And I can say here, this is vCenter server in lab one of my wired brain coffee infrastructure. All right, I'll click next here. Uh oh, it says we failed to connect to vCenter. Let's go ahead and add on the fully qualified domain name here. That may be the problem. I'll add on wiredbraincoffee.com, click next. Now we need to enter the name of the vShield manager as well as the administrative credentials for it. So I've created a DNS entry for this as well. It's vsm cell one dot, and then we'll put in the fully qualified domain name here as well, wirebraincoffee.com. The username for vShield Manager we configured was administrator, and password is our default administrative password. I'll click Next here. All right, it says it's ready to complete the connection to vCenter and vShield Manager. I click Finish. And notice the spinning wheel over here. It says we're attaching to vCenter. And there we go. Now we have a number of new options. And notice the new options that showed up here. Create a new provider VDC, network, network pool, and we've got all these tasks down here. 
Now if we go into Manage and Monitor, there's the new vCenter that we just configured. All right, so we successfully connected to vCenter and vShield Manager. Notice that over here. But what about that vShield Manager license key? That could be a problem if we don't go over to the vSphere client and enter it. So let's do that now. Here in my vSphere client, I'm going to go up to Home and down to Licensing. And right now I've got a vSphere 5 Enterprise Plus license. And then I've got a number of items here in evaluation mode or a number of products. So let's check this out. Here I've got vShield App, Edge, and Endpoint, as well as vCenter. But I'm going to have to license vCenter here before it expires. I'll do that after this lesson. But right now, let's make sure that vShield is indeed licensed before the license expires here. So I'm just going to click Manage vSphere Licenses. All right, so I just pasted in my license keys. I went ahead and did vCenter Server because I had it handy. So I've got one license for vCenter Server and then up to 1,000 VMs of VMware vShield Edge. So I'll click Next here, and then we'll assign these license keys. Let's see, we'll assign one to vCenter Server. And then we'll go into the Solutions tab here, and then we'll assign uh, one for vShield Edge. Here we go. There it is. And then I'll click Next. And to confirm changes, we've got two licenses we're adding. I'll click Finish. All right, now we've got our vShield Edge and vCenter server all licensed and ready to go. Let's go back and continue the setup of vCloud Director. Okay, we successfully connected to vCenter and vShield.